hand grenades to smoke out zama zamas, the radical tactics used by police in their fight against crimes in Ruhrpurt. No-fly zones and visible police presence, the security clusters preparations for the upcoming BRIC summit here in Johannesburg. Meriton inclusivity, the future of South Africa's politics laid out in the multi-party convention. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. This is Eyewitness News. This is Eyewitness News. Tackling the crime wave, violence and illegal mining activity in Leratong village in Rudaput. Operation Chanela kicked off today with dozens of police vehicles, tanks and trucks along the R558 highway. Police found mercury, machetes and mining equipment. Gauteng Provincial Commissioner Elias Mawela says they will continue interrupting all illegal mining activity around the province. In the past week, 29 Zama Zamas were arrested in Cleveland and Rodeput, and today near an abandoned mine in the Solplaiki Township, another Zama Zama was caught in one of the holes. Mawela also led the police brigade to a second abandoned mining site where they used hand grenades to smoke out the underground tunnels. The, the illegal miners actually they do what we call it surface mining and uh, they also process the um, uh, gold bearing materials here. So we decided to can come over here so that we can do some disruption operation by removing their tools of trade. We'll try our level best to can destroy the whole operational area. So what will the ideal cabinet look like post an ANC-led government? Including not working with the governing party, we told that power sharing will be based on merit and inclusivity. That's one of the issues discussed in the final day of the Moonshot Pact talks that include seven opposition parties. I've agreed that the leader of the largest party will become the leader of government. Big agreement has been that the parties have agreed to relook really at the design of the national cabinet. Preparing for a BRICS summit without one of the most important leaders, while Vladimir Putin remains in Russia due to the pressure of the ICC arrest warrant for him, the area around the Santin Convention Center has been declared a no-drone zone. The Joburg venue will be hosting the 15th BRICS summit next week. And the South African Civil Aviation Authority says that the airspace in a two nautical mile radius around the center will be restricted from the 22nd to the 24th of this month. The country's security cluster is expecting over 40 heads of state and many other diplomats to attend the summit. Those who are found to be operating drones in the vicinity will be in breach of the restricted imposed by the Civil Aviation Authority and as such steps will be taken against transgressors. Residents in the city of Johannesburg are advised that there will be a limited access in areas surrounding the Sentin Convention Center. Former Paralympian Oscar Pistorius is taking his fight for parole to the Constitutional Court. Pistorius is currently serving a 15-year prison sentence for the 2013 murder of his model girlfriend, Riva Stienkamp, who he shot through the bathroom door of his Pretoria East home on Valentine's Day that year. In 2016, Oscar Pistorius was sentenced to six years behind bars for murdering Reva Stankamp. But in 2017, the ACA increased this to an effect of 13 years and five months on appeal. Previously, it was understood that his sentence had still started in 2016, when the original one was handed down though, which would have made him eligible for parole in March this year, and a parole hearing was convened accordingly. But days before it sat, the SCA issued a communique indicating that Pistorius' sentence had in fact only started in 2017, when the final sentence was handed down, which would only make him eligible for parole in August next year, and his application wound up being refused as a result. In the papers he's now filed in the Constitutional Court, though, he argues, in essence, that his prison sentence and the amount of time he has to serve before becoming eligible for parole have effectively been unfairly increased. He says this is clearly incorrect and untenable and leads to his incarceration without just cause, which he further maintains is an infringement of his fundamental rights. Bernadette Wicks, Eyewitness News.
A 51-year-old man arrested for pulling the hair of a grade 8 pupil at Crowthorn Christian Academy has been granted bail of 2,000 rand. Gauteng police say the man appeared at the Midrand Magistrates Court this morning facing charges of assault. This after a widely circulated video showed the learner being forcefully removed from the classroom due to a new policy that prohibited dreadlocks. The school, which the Gauteng Education Department says has been operating illegally, has since closed its doors following the incident. The Western Cape Education Department says teaching and learning in Mossel Bay has been hugely disrupted by protest action in the town. It's understood that community members are marching to the local municipality to air their grievances over increased municipal tariffs and alleged corruption within the municipality. A similar protest turned violent in Swellendam yesterday, and more than 100 people have been arrested and are expected to appear in court. This is yet another devastating blow to our children's education, just a week after a prolonged and violent minibus taxi strike. We simply cannot afford to lose any more teaching and learning time to disruptions at a time when we are trying hard to get back on track after the pandemic. And that's it for today's news. Remember to like and subscribe. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.